This is the true story of an iconic artist named Margaret Keane, who was famous for the Big Eyes paintings in the 50s. At this time, women couldn't be prominent members of society like men were. They were meant to stay home, care for the kids, and mind their own business. But Margaret was different. She had a talent and wanted to show it to the world. When she met Walter Keane, he knew she was different. He knew she had a talent and wasn't afraid to take advantage of her and trick her into letting him claim her art as his own. This story is about a talented woman who stood up against what she believed in, fought for women's rights, and took back everything that was always hers. Margaret Ulbrich leaves her then-husband and takes her young daughter Jane to North Beach, San Francisco. In the 1950s, this wasn't a thing that women did. So, picking up the pieces and getting her life back together would not be easy. Margaret needs to find work so she can support herself and her daughter. But she's never worked before, and all she has is an art degree and all her paintings as experience. She gets a job painting illustrations at a furniture factory, and then on the side, she does portraits in her unique style, at an outdoor art show. This is where she ends up meeting a charismatic and exciting new man who seems to be blown away by her art. He's an artist who isn't afraid to brag about his success. When Margaret tells him that her husband is no longer in the picture, he doesn't waste a second before having her out on a dinner date that night. He goes on and on about her talent and his spectacular life, full of romance and art. She can't help but fall head over heels for him. The next day Margaret brings her daughter Jane and Walter, out by the water to do some painting. After some time, Jane notices that Walter still hasn't painted anything on his canvas, and finds it rather peculiar. Walter then questions Margaret about why the eyes in her paintings are so big and strange looking. She explains that the eyes are the windows to the soul. A man interrupts their date by asking Walter questions about permits, and Walter explains to Margaret that he makes money in real estate. He claims that he's embarrassed that he's had to turn to a regular job to support himself, because he always dreamed of being able to support himself with his art. Margaret is distraught when her ex-husband asks for custody as part of the divorce settlement. Walter proposes, and they marry and honeymoon in Hawaii. She retains custody of Jane. Walter tells her he will care for her, and make her and Jane happy forever. After their wedding, they head off to their honeymoon, where Walter has women lined up to have their portraits done by Margaret. This is where she starts signing her paintings under her new name, Keen. When they return from their honeymoon, Margaret meets her best friend for lunch, where she informs her of her new husband's promiscuous reputation in the art community. Despite her friend's suspicions regarding her husband's intentions, Margaret stands by him and believes in his dedication to her and Jane. Unable to get his or Margaret's paintings into a fine art gallery, he decides to get a little creative. Walter convinces the owner of a popular jazz club, Enrico Banducci, to rent him some wall space to exhibit their work. Shortly after Walter sets up shop in the club, he's almost ready to lose hope, until a woman comes along and she is wholly entranced in one of the sad big eyes paintings. He's a bit bummed it wasn't his art, but he's excited to make money regardless. After the sale, Walter gets mad at the club owner for shoving his exhibit next to the bathrooms. They get in a dramatic scuffle, Walter ends up in jail, and Margaret's forced to come and post bail. Walter tells her about the sale of her painting and about how he didn't correct them when they assumed he made it. Margaret then gets upset and yells at him never to do it again. When Walter heads back to the club to collect his art, the club owner excitedly runs up to him, telling him their fight became a front-page story in a local newspaper, and now the club is packed with people curious to see the art that made grown men fight. This convinces the men to keep up the feud in public to benefit their businesses. When Walter gets home from the art exhibit, he excitedly starts throwing money at Margaret because he sold out all of her paintings. Right away, Margaret gets to making new paintings and decides to surprise Walter by showing up in person to display her latest piece. But when she gets there, she overhears Walter bragging about his art, to some people looking to make a purchase. 
It turns out Walter never stopped taking credit for her art. He dismisses his behavior by saying, what does it matter who made it? What matters is we have money in our pockets. When Margaret witnesses a couple admiring some of her art, they ask her who the artist is, and she freezes up, causing Walter to speak up and lie again about being his. You can see the look of disappointment on her face as she loses her credibility. Walter keeps up his charismatic act and convinces her that they're a family called Keen, which makes them both Keen, and this is reason enough to be proud of the Keen name on her art. After Walter and Margaret's agreement, Walter travels around town proudly lying about his successful artwork. They also lie to Margaret's daughter. Margaret feels terrible about lying to her daughter, so she goes to a local church to get advice from their priest. He reassures her that if her husband thinks this is what's suitable for their family and it's not doing her daughter any harm, then he is trying to make the best of a difficult situation in a complicated world. Walter opens his own gallery, selling Margaret's art. Margaret's friend shows up, and wants to know why she isn't claiming any of the art as hers. Margaret says it's because Walter is more established than her. She then awkwardly changes the subject, making it evident that the topic makes her uneasy. With each person Margaret and Walter interact with, it becomes clear that Margaret is extremely uncomfortable lying. Meanwhile, Walter doesn't flinch when he lies, not even when he gets caught in one. He continues the lie to the extent that he shoves Margaret up in the attic, where he locks her away to paint continuously. As her daughter grows more suspicious, it becomes evident that this lie can't go on forever. Somehow, Margaret teaches Walter how to speak to the public about the art's meaning and purpose, using his experiences during wartime. People love emotional stories, and this gains Walter even more publicity. However, publicity doesn't mean success, and the general public isn't the type who can afford their paintings. But of course, being the greedy and manipulative person Walter is, he realizes they can make money selling cheap reproductions of Margaret's works. But all this publicity and success is taking a toll on Margaret's pride, and this affects her, knowing that her life's work is claimed by someone else. Walter's greed keeps growing. Margaret makes a new kind of art, and wants to sign it off as her own. When Margaret convinces him to let her showcase the piece as her own, he allows it as long as they can showcase the whole family as being artists. So, they go to the local reporter Walter deals with, and offer their story. To Margaret's surprise, Walter introduces a little girl. He claims that this girl is from a previous marriage. Margaret has no idea about this, making it increasingly apparent that Walter isn't at all who she thought he was. Walter's success grows more and more, and Margaret can't help but feel more and more insecure. She honestly believes, people won't take woman's art seriously and that Walter is the one who has a way with people, and should be the one selling their art. One day when her best friend visits, she barges into Margaret's art studio and sees the vast array of pieces. Walter then bolts in, pretending to work, and her friend doesn't buy his lie. Margaret's friend accuses Walter of being a fraud causing Walter to kick her out of the house, demanding Margaret never to invite her over ever again. One day, Margaret goes to get a canvas for her next piece when she sees a mysterious box. She finds a crate full of paintings of Parisian street scenes, all signed, S. Senek. She realizes, she has never actually seen Walter paint, and discovers he has been painting over the name of the original artist and claiming these paintings as his own. When confronted, he says he always wanted to be an artist, but never had the talent. She has had enough of his lies. Eventually, Walter falls to a chair, muttering excuses for lying his life away to Margaret. At this point, she doesn't care and walks out of the room to contemplate her next move. Although Margaret doesn't leave Walter, she makes him sleep in another bed. Walter threatens to have her killed. Later, he tells her of his plan to get a painting displayed at the upcoming New York World's Fair and demands Margaret paint her next masterpiece. And all the proceeds are going to be donated to UNICEF. What better way to reel Margaret in, again? Jane sneaks into the studio when Margaret is working on the huge painting, called Tomorrow Forever, 
and says she already knew Margaret was really the artist. Jane admits to her mom that she's always known the truth. When the masterpiece is hung, it turns out that not everyone in New York City loves Walter and his art. One of the leading art critics at the time, named John Cannaday, was determined to have Walter's career fail. He finds him phony and thinks he's an insult to what true art is. He doesn't hesitate before he writes a very harshly critical article in the New York Times. The day the article gets published, Walter happens to be at a fancy party that Mr. Cannaday is at. Walter confronts the critic. Cannaday isn't affected at all by Walter's outburst and stands by his words. Walter even attempted to stab him with a fork in front of the entire party. It doesn't take long before they take his painting down and decide not to showcase it at the World Fair anymore. Walter finally starts to come unhinged and is acting increasingly manic, drinking, shouting, and making threats. He blames Margaret for his downfall and starts acting violently, causing Jane and Margaret to hide in the art studio. While they're hiding from him in fear, he peers into the keyhole and decides to throw a match in, causing the whole room to go up in flames. Luckily, Margaret and Jane run away from home. One year later, Margaret and Jane have settled in Honolulu, Hawaii. She's trying to settle for a divorce which Walter is extremely difficult about. Walter says he will only give Margaret a divorce, if she signs over the rights for all the keen paintings ever made, and produces 100 more. Initially Margaret agrees, but her growing interest in the Jehovah's Witnesses convinces her of the importance of honesty. She finally signs a batch of paintings with her own name. Later, on a Hawaiian radio show, she reveals she is the real artist behind the Big Eyes paintings, which makes national news. Nolan publishes Walter's claims that Margaret is delusional. On Jane's suggestion, Margaret sues both Walter and Nolan's newspaper for slander and libel. At the trial, the judge immediately dismisses the libel suit against the newspaper, and Walter is left to defend himself against slander. He botches his defense, even mimicking in court what he has gathered from watching Perry Mason episodes on TV. When he proceeds to cross-examine himself as a witness, the judge is fed up and directs both Margaret and Walter to create a painting in court to prove who is the real artist. Whereas Margaret paints steadily, Walter stalls before claiming his arm hurts too much to hold a paintbrush. Margaret wins the lawsuit, and a fan asks her to sign a copy of Walter's coffee table book. Ultimately, Margaret came out on top, winning her art back in confidence. And now, the world knows that a woman is one of the most iconic painters of the 1950s. Despite Margaret winning the court case, Walter refused ever to accept defeat. Walter continued to insist he was the true artist until his death, though he never painted again. But in the end, he still lost. He died in the year 2000, in poverty. Tim Burton, who directed the film, owned a giant collection of Margaret's work, and commissioned her to make a painting of his then-girlfriend Lisa Marie. He even had her make one of his ex-wives, Helena Bonham Carter, and their old chihuahua. Before the film came out, Margaret Keene's paintings skyrocketed and were sold for $8,500. Amy Adams, who played Margaret in the movie, wanted to give her the best portrayal possible, so she met up with her to research the real Margaret. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more moving stories like this one. We would like to know your thoughts about this story in the comments section down below. A like and share are also welcomed. Have a nice day.